sex is so powerful that if it is not contained it can bring low the high and mighty have you ever thought to yourself why once people begin to have sex in a relationship it's almost as if their mind shut down it's almost as if they lose their sense of reasoning like they don't think straight anymore sex is that powerful no wonder god laid down the rules for us and he says it should only be engaged in when you're married to one partner because he understands what he has created. I mean, who else will have a better understanding of it except, of course, the one who has created it? One thing about God is that he is not forceful. You know, the first person choose anything. Like he has laid down the cards on the table. He says, see, Amo, you could not see. This is not light. This is not darkness. Choose which thing you want. Choose how you want to hang yourself. <laughs> Sometimes when I hear people say, eh, but I use condom now, eh, she tell me, say, I join body with this one. I beg you, yeah, I wear condom, nothing did it. My darling sister, my brother, not be about condom. This is about the connection of your spirit, exchange of energies. People completely lose their sense of reasoning. Picture a scenario where a man who is highly placed in the society, in his place of worship, in his family, but when he begins to lust after someone who is like below his standard, maybe a house girl or something, it's almost as if his mind shut down. At that point, you know even reason, say, what if she carry belly? What if this girl gets sickness for body? Like what if this goes out of hand and it ruins my reputation? A whole lot of things that could have been put into consideration, their mind shut down until that act is perpetrated. You see, sex is very powerful. Nobody should ever take it for granted. Have you ever tried to advise someone in a very toxic relationship? I mean, this guy, they beat you up. They deck you steady. He go come buy gifts. Come, come beg you. You know, feel leave him. You know, people like that, when you advise them, if you advise from that next tomorrow, in three days, you go see them together with that person. They work hand to hand. They do lovey lovey. When you come to advise people like that, you come like, say, be with she, with she. You know what made them succeed? <laughs> they can't carry you take sex to and you know they'll begin to look at you as if you're the one who doesn't want their relationship to blossom but they are not seeing what you can see because you're not in the relationship with them you're not having sex with them so of course you can see clearly you're very objective with your sight with your thinking with everything so people don't reason when they begin to have sex especially early on in a relationship when you're supposed to get to meet each other, know each other, you know, find out one or two things. Now, don't rush. Go, go, buddy. Now, when you see the person, what comes to your mind is you just want to yank off the top, yank off the shirt, and, you know, start engaging in the acts. No time to think, no room to study each other, no room to get to know each other, which is the essence of cutting. So, sex is not something that should be rushed in a relationship. In fact, eh, in fact, avoid it. This is the reason why when people break up, you go see somebody, they cry, like, see, one killing self. You go hear things like, all oh, my investment, I'm emotionally invested, I am this, I am that. I understand some people would have wasted your time, you know, you'd have given like four or five years of your life to that relationship, which is not something you can forget in a heartbeat, right? But when you do not have sex in that relationship, trust me, it's easier to move on. It's easier to heal from the past. But when sex is involved, you begin to hear things like, ah, all the knocking, where this guy knock me, all this one, ah, I cannot cope. Ah, I'm not sure, so I will feel live without this person. Why is it that most ladies especially find it difficult to move on from their first boyfriend or the person who has this virgin them? This is to tell you how powerful sex is. You hear things like, he's my first love. Ah, you know, go understand that guy. Nothing to understand is just the fact that you have had sex with him and he is the first one you've ever had. So the bonding, uh, the bonding no get part two. One of the reasons why we should stay away from premarital sex is that you cannot actually marry someone on the account of he's very good in bed, he knows how to satisfy me, he knows how to work my body and all of that. Because in marriage, it's not only sex you're going to be having. How many hours it is you go have sex for? I mean, one to two hours at most, maybe for the first six months. Oh, you think in every day and I go just in that, you go tired, don't you get? And that is when it becomes a problem because you know why? You didn't take the time to study each other. You did not build friendship and, you know, companionship. So now all you think about when you're together is having sex. So when you're not having sex, what? So the period of courtship is for you to get to know each other, understand each other on a deeper level, not sex. Sex is going to come afterwards. I mean, you go knock, you go tire. Don't be married, you won't marry. <laughs> you go knock, you go tire now. So why are you rushing? Something that you're going to do, like, you know, for like forever. So why are you rushing? You know, 
because it's going to blind you it's going to blind you from seeing the things that are even more important now looking at it on the flip side yes you're married to that person and you have the full license even baba god don't approve and make you do the knocking you know but now you're not having sex it becomes a problem so sex is very powerful when you're having it sometimes and when you're not even having it when you're having it outside marriage it's a problem and then when you're in marriage and you're not having it and you're healthy both healthy and strong it becomes a problem i heard someone say something one day i was much younger then but you know this thing kind of stayed with me for like the longest so this elderly woman said you can know the healthiness of a marriage relationship by how often they have sex I heard that thing then, it didn't make any sense to me because of course I wasn't married and I wasn't thinking in that line. But today, thinking about it is making a whole lot of sense. <laughs> so we have to be careful when we're making this decision. Before you remove your clothes, guy, before you off pants, baby girl, think calm. Now what do you want with this? Think about the repercussion. Think about the many things that can string along just by this singular act of maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And if you want to marry that guy or you want to marry that lady because how much she's a bit knack, how many hours you could do them? We have 24 hours in a day. Highest, but that you do two hours. The remaining 22 hours, what do you they do? Now they look each other. Last, last, we know if they wiser than God. God himself who created this thing already knows the implication. He already understands the danger. That is why he's giving us this instruction. He's the manufacturer. Who else would have been able to give a better instruction for the use of a product other than the manufacturer of that product? Think calm. You know, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe if you have not done so yet. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.